When quilting t-shirt or memory quilts, sometimes we need to quilt around spaces or just stop quilting when we get to certain spaces. This can happen if we're working with maybe a really large, thick iron-on decal or something that we're afraid is going to eat up the needle or mess up the decal. This can also happen if we're including buttons or zippers or um, if there's something else that we just don't want to quilt over. Rhinestones on dance costumes is another thing that we just don't want to quilt near. If you're quilting on your domestic machine or if you're doing free motion quilting on a long arm, that's not an issue. You just quilt around it. But if you're using edge to edge quilting on a long arm, then we need to use something called masking to tell the long arm not to quilt in that area. In this video, I will show you how I use masking on my Bernina Q24 with Qmatic to not quilt on certain areas of a memory quilt with baby clothes where there's buttons, zippers, and pockets that I don't want to quilt over. Hi, I'm Julie Patterson of JCT Quilting and I want to help you turn your memories into quilted treasures. In this video, I'm going to show you how I use the masking tool on my Bernina Q24 with Qmatic to tell the machine to stop the edge-to-edge -edge quilting in specific areas. First, I'll show you what it looks like on the sew head when I block out the area, and then I'll show you what it looks like on my computer screen. Then I'll show you parts of the finished quilt where I used that masked feature to stop the quilting so that I could retain the features of the buttons, the zippers, and the pockets that are in this baby clothes quilt. Okay, so I need to use the masking tool. I have snaps here and this lace and then a pocket here that I don't want to stitch over when I'm quilting. So I'm gonna show you what I do here and on my sew head and then um, I'll come down here and do another pocket and I'll show you what I do on the screen. So I want to block off, I was going to do just this square but because these are right next to each other, I'll probably do both of these at the same time. So I start by going to the computer to select the area and then I hit the masking tool, create region, sew head, because I'm going to use this sew head to define the area where I do not want to sew and it is set up to remove the inside and to not do the masking outline, which means I don't, so if I mask this square, for example, I don't want a stitch on this square. For this quilt, I don't need it. Maybe for another quilt that would be needed, but for this one, I don't need that. Okay, so now you can see my sew head is set up to say set. And so what it's asking for me to do is set the boundaries. It doesn't have to be a square or a rectangle. It can be any oblong shape. Now, while I'm doing this, I'm also looking at the screen to see where the design is so that I'm masking the right area, but also in a way that kind of works with the design. So where I am now is actually part of the previous stitch. So I can hit anywhere for the set just to get this going. I'm gonna set and then I don't want, okay, so my design will start here. And I do not want this part. I'm just gonna set another boundary and I don't want this whole pocket. I'm gonna set another boundary. Set another boundary. And there is a design that will come in right here, I can see on the screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it right here in the hopes that I can keep that part of the design. I'm gonna set and then come up, come over here, set. I'm just trying to hit set periodically, maybe on like random corners or lines, set. And then this part is actually not part of this, it's part of the previous row, so it doesn't matter where I close it off. Okay, let me show you what all that setting did. Okay, so this black line is what I just set for the boundaries. And you can see this is the part on that pocket where, where I was saying I want the stitch to keep a little, I'm not gonna block off that little loop. It works for the pocket, it might cut off that bottom corner of the pocket with stitches, but I'm okay with that. But I'm trying to, in this case it worked out really well, I'm just gonna remove that heart. 
I'll have to think. I might even remove this lower place of the heart. I'll have to go back and see where that is on the design. I think it might just be, I'll just have to see. If I don't mind keeping that part, I'll keep it. But um, for now, so I initially came in and did create region and then sew head. I want the inside gone. I like that zone. So now I'm going to hit check mark. And so now it is gone. That whole region is gone. So now I'm gonna go back to my quilt and see where this is. This is my sew head pointer. So I'm gonna bring the pointer down to this and just see, do I wanna keep that part of the heart or do I not? So let's look at where that will be. And I'm looking at my screen. And this is it. So it would just be, it would just be this little section. Um, I don't know that that's absolutely crucial for just some little part. So I, I don't think I want that part. I just don't like the look of it. It's not needed. Obviously it's a personal preference. I'm going to zoom in because I'm going to end up using not my sew head, but my finger on this one. So I've used my arrow. I've marked it. I'm going to go hit masking. Uh, I'm going to create a region, but this time I'm going to use the screen. And you can just click anywhere. The first click feels weird. I'm just touching my screen. You could also use your mouse. The first one's weird because you don't see anything, but it really is taking effect. I don't want that region. I'm going to hit OK. And now it is done. So now I'm going to use this eye tool to zoom out, but that's actually too far. So I'm going to hit the zoom tool and zoom in. I just want this sewing region to be what I see. And now I'm going to move on and mask something else. Okay, now I'm going to mask a pocket, but I'm going to show you what I'm doing on the screen. So I hit the arrow to select the design. I'm going to hit the masking tool. I'm creating a region with my sew head. So now I'm going back to my sew head. I'm going to outline the region and you can see the sew head moving on the screen. So this is where the pocket is. I'm trying to see, I would like to, I would like to come right in between that line if I can, so I can keep the loop of the flower, the inner loop, but not that outside. So I'll hit set. Set. And then my pocket actually goes all the way over here, but you can see this is part of the next row. So it actually doesn't matter where I mark that because it's not going to erase it right now. It's not selected and I'll need to do it once I adjust and get to the next row. So I'm just going to set randomly somewhere over here, get to the top of my pocket. And you don't have to come exactly. I'll show you. So you can see the lines don't connect exactly, and that's okay. It will still understand the region that you're trying to make. I like that region, I'm gonna hit yes. Now I'm gonna zoom in and make sure this isn't kind of funny. Um, no, that's okay. It's maybe a little interesting, but I'm okay with that. So again, zoom out, zoom in so it's in my region. Okay, so now that region is done. Now I'm going to quilt out that row. A nice feature of using the masking tool instead of the pause button to manually pause when you hit buttons or pockets or whatever the spot is, is that with the masking tool, the machine will do a start stitch and a stop stitch when it's pausing. So you don't have to worry as much about knotting the thread, just burying it. Now let's take a look at some of the features I was able to keep on this quilt because I used the masking tool to knot quilt in certain areas. Here is a ruffle. I was able to do some quilting behind the ruffle and on the other part of the shirt, but I kept the ruffle. Here are some buttons. Underneath the buttons is another one of the shirts. Here's a zipper. Again, with another shirt behind it. Here's a cute shirt with some buttons, a pocket, a rope tie. I kept that whole square free from quilting. Here's a snap, and behind it I put another shirt. Here's a cute little pocket that I kept. 
And then for this snap, I did do some quilting on the bottom. You can open the snap, but not the whole way. I kept that rope, some cute ears on the footies, another snap, but this time I put quilting cotton behind it. I changed it up based on how much baby fabric, baby clothes fabric I had remaining. I kept the bunny ears from a hoodie. This was a cute spaghetti strap shirt, and I was able to keep the bow with the fringe and the straps. A little bow and then the other ruffle and then there's the pocket from the first part of the video and then there's the pocket from the second part of the video those are the pockets that I quilted around earlier in this video another button with a baby shirt behind it and again here's that part from the first part of the video and then another button with some shirts behind it kept a little bow another button with a shirt behind it A footy from the pajamas. The other pocket from that bottom row. A sweater top. You can see I quilted some of the square, but not the bottom part of the square. A zipper with quilting cotton behind it. A little ruffle and a little bow. Some more snaps. And then a pocket. A zipper with a shirt behind it. A little bow and another zipper with quilting cotton behind it. So thanks to the masking tool I was able to quilt around some of these features which allowed me to make a more interactive quilt. Thank you for watching this video about how to use the masking tool when doing edge-to-edge -edge long arm quilting. If you enjoyed this video please hit the like button and hit subscribe so you'll be informed the next time a video is released.